heard the whooshing sound of the deadlines as they flew past, and I hated it. Hi, I'm a graphic designer who's recovering from being severely burnt out. Let's talk about it. So I just want to start off with a basic definition of burnout. WebMD defines it as a feeling of ex of type of exhaustion caused by constantly feeling swamped, like with work. Like I associate burnout with just like, imagine just working on fumes, like that's what burnout is. I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're familiar by now. It is so windy outside. I don't know if you hear everything that's going on. It wasn't until last year that I realized that I'd been burned out for years and I did some soul searching and I think that if I could pinpoint when I was burned out, it was probably around the time I graduated from college. So from pre-K to senior year of college, like that was my first job. My parents didn't want me to have like an actual paying job. So my number one goal was to get those A's. And I did. But after college, like I didn't know what to do. Like I couldn't research or study my way into six figures. If you know how, let me know. But after college, I didn't know what to do. I was exhausted, but I had to like apply to a bunch of jobs and like keep working through that exhaustion. Like there were no breaks. And that's probably like a bunch of us in corporate America. No stranger there. I had to find work. I had to get that bread. So we fast forward to my first dream job where I was a graphic designer slash packaging designer in the health and wellness space. Does that sound familiar at all? And I loved everything about it and I was there for five years and I, I thought I could be there for more, but through, through more soul searching and growing and developing, I realized that I wanted more out of my career than what I was doing, plus, it just really seemed like my boss didn't like the work I was doing. Like he was really never happy with anything I did, it seemed like. Granted, it was my first job out of college and there were some things that I said that I could do that I um, embellished. But if he didn't like my stuff, I don't know why he didn't just fire me, honestly. <laughs> but it was, it was there towards the end. Well, the middle towards the end where I was showing signs of severe burnout and I didn't manage it very well because I didn't even know what it was called. A clue that you might be burnt out is that you go through your work day and someone asks you how was your day and you can't think of one good thing. Nothing, like it wasn't a terrible day, nothing bad happened but it just like wasn't a good day and I couldn't, you can't think of one thing to say that was positive about a coworker, about the job you did. That is a big clue. <laughs> but with that picture painted, I'm just saying again that I'm just a graphic designer. I didn't go to therapy, probably should have. I figured out some ways that helped me heal some of my burnout and I wanna share that with you. But if you're looking for professional advice, I suggest that you talk to a therapist, a licensed therapist or counselor. But if you're just morbidly curious on how I helped my own burnout, then just keep watching. And if you're not a graphic designer watching, this keep watching because what I'm about to say is just like general human being things not so much graphic design focused things because I'm at the end of the day I'm just a person obviously and this is just one person's perspective on burnout within corporate America so what does burnout look like to me burnout isn't just one thing I think burnout is a bunch of things in a trench coat so it's basically just a thousand just different occurrences throughout the day that just wear and tear on you throughout the week, month, year, years. They don't seem like much at the time, but then they just like build up over time until one day you explode or you implode because those are types of people too. And then, and you don't know why. Have you heard of death by a thousand cuts? Death by a thousand cuts is exactly what it feels like. And like I said, there's so many reasons, so many ways to feel burnt out. There's so many symptoms. Feel burned out from work, from life, from like anything you put effort into. Like you, there's a possibility you feel burnt out. You feel bur burnt out about working out. Feel burnt out about creativity. And that's just, life sometimes that's just how it is sometimes in general 
burnout is really just natural. It's just a natural part of like work cycles. Like you get through a really big project and you're tired after that. That makes sense. But feeling burnt out over months, years, that's not good. And that's what I had been going through. So burnout for me especially looked like number one, not wanting to be creative anymore. Clue number one for me, like I didn't want to make YouTube videos anymore. And this was something that I really enjoyed doing. Like editing is like super tedious, but I really loved just like reviewing stuff in front of a camera and seeing what people thought. But with all the burnout and weight of all those things that happened throughout my weeks at work, my months at work, I just like didn't have the energy to just get in front of a camera and like hit record and talk about stuff. It just felt so exhausting on top of everything else I was trying to manage at that time. And I was so sad about it. You can see my previous video. I was so sad about it. And professionally not wanting to be creative anymore looked like quitting graphic design altogether and like finding a different career path. Like I love those personality tests. I was like, what kind of career should I look for as an INFJ? Or what kind of jobs should I look for based on my strengths finder? I love graphic design, but the imposter syndrome was real. And I had coworkers making me second guess if I really knew anything about graphic design. Mind you, I was the one with the degree. Make it make sense. But then th with all that, I was like, you know what? Being a receptionist kind of sounds fun. And then I'll make videos on the side. Baby girl. No. <laughs> Number two, heightened perfectionism. That's a symptom of burnout. I, this was crippling for me because I already am trying to be recovering from regular perfectionism. And one symptom of perfectionism is procrastination. And I thought this was just like the dopamine wasn't there. The dopamine really wasn't there <laughs> at all, even on projects that I used to love. So in a lot of cases, perfectionism isn't just making something look perfect. It's also being frozen and not doing anything because anything you do won't be perfect. So you're just frozen in fear of making an imperfect decision. So that's annoying. I just kept waiting for things to be perfect enough to submit to my boss, my manager, whatever. But anything I made never felt good enough. So I missed deadlines, which is not good at a job. I heard the whooshing sound of the deadlines as they flew past and I hated it. And I still get frozen, but I think I get frozen at least uh, less than I used to. I'm learning to believe the saying that messy action is better than perfect inaction. Shia LaBeouf was right, just do it. So more than what it looks like, Burnout can feel like chronic fatigue, feeling sleepy, an unnatural amount. I was taking a ton of naps. I was just so tired. Like I'd go to bed late. And then when I got to bed, I was just like, my brain wouldn't shut off. And it would just think of all of the extremely specific circumstances and conversations that I would have the next day. And I was like, okay, well, if this person says this, then I'm gonna say exactly this, checkmate. And that never happened, because that's just my imagination being very counterproductive. There's just so many cooler things you can imagine than that. It's a waste of time, a waste of time. So I could go on for 20 more minutes, so this, there's a, like a lot of symptoms. So now let's get into the things that actually did help me. And these are things that I will admit that if you told me to do these before I realize it for myself, I would have kicked and screamed the entire time. But after my tantrum and maybe a juice box, I know that I would have felt better. And 
I just want to say nothing that I'm about to say is new. It's not new information. These are just a few things that helped me recover. Let me just say that I don't feel like I'm 100% fully healed from being burnt out with everything that has compacted on me for the past six plus seven plus years. But like I mentioned the death by a thousand cuts, I feel like I'm on the other side of those cuts and those cuts are healing and some of them are scars and some of them are still scabs. So gross, but you get the idea. Okay, so let's just get into it. power for a minute, but here I am. So here are a few things that helped me. Number one, just taking it one step at a time. Like I said, burnout is caused by a million different things. It's going to take a process. It's not going to heal overnight. I was like burned out for six plus years and it took over a year and a half to get me to this point. And I'm sure there's still a lot I need to work on up in here and that is okay. So secondly, I had to learn how to say no. I had to call it. I quit my last job. Hi, it's me, Editing Karen. I completely forgot to mention that in between my first dream job and my second dream job, I was doing something totally different for a little bit. And that was really what set me over the edge with like figuring out how, just how deep my burnout was and just how unsure of myself it, like I'd become. Uh, and I, I just keep talking. So that's the biggest thing that I needed to mention right here. So what I'm about to say is about that job, not my first dream job that I was talking about previously. Okay, let's get back into it. I quit my last job because I was hitting every item on the burnout list, like every item. And I hate quitting. Like losing sucks, but quitting is just so much worse to me. And I was, I beat myself up for it for a while. Uh, but knowing my boundaries and knowing when to say, mm, that's not for me, like that one instance, like doesn't define me as a quitter. I just quit one thing. That doesn't make me a quitter. I struggle. I, I really struggled with that. But like now going into my second dream job, like I've, I've had the space to like repair and like really contemplate and think about what that is for me what my boundaries are, what saying no looks like in a good way. But let me just say like, if your company supports burnout culture or if it's just an overall toxic environment, like you are free to leave. Like they're not your family. They are a paycheck. You can go on LinkedIn and find a hundred other opportunities that might be a lot better. So just apply to five. Pause this video and apply to five right now. Number three, therapy would have helped a lot. I should have done this first. There are way more types of therapy than just talking it out. Like for kids, I've seen like they do play therapy. They have video game therapy. And I'm pretty sure as an adult, you get to choose what kind of therapy you wanna do, so. Let's not let the kids have all the fun. There's brain spotting therapy, which is something that I personally want to do. It deals with mental blockers and like, not that I have PTSD, but it does PT, they, they deal with like PTSD, trauma response and all kinds of really interesting things. But that one is definitely high on my list. And there's EMDR, which is like a eye mapping therapy, which I'm really watering that down. But there's more to therapy than just talking your feelings out. So if that's something that you like, you feel like you need to look into, I recommend that you do because it could be very helpful. And again, like I should have done this for like, I should have talked to a therapist probably first and gone through everything in my brain. And I probably would have healed my burnout way faster than six, seven years. I don't know exactly the number. I'm just saying like a range. So number four, self-reflection in the form of journaling specifically. I hate journaling. I never really wanted to keep a journal. And then when everyone convinced me that that's something that I had to do because I'm going to regret it, I found out my mom read my diary and I thought I hit it very well, but she found it somehow. And that was in elementary school. So after that, I only wrote for school 
for essays, but a couple years ago in 2022, that was a really crazy year for me. It was a year of personal growth, development, but there was like a ton of like little bumps along the way to get there. It was just like a lot of learning, personal reflection and all that kind of stuff. And I decided before 2022 ended that I would write down everything that I could remember that happened that year in as much detail as I could remember. And let me tell you, I did not finish because my hand hurt. After like two days of writing all that, I filled like half a journal. I feel like, I, I think I have carpal tunnel, I don't know. But honestly, I did feel a weight lift off my shoulders because I got all of that information out of my head and just like, I felt so relieved. Like I don't need to be responsible to remember this anymore. I was just keeping every offense that I could think of in my head, every, every negative interaction was just like sitting in my brain constantly, on my shoulders, in my jaw. And I can't tell you how good it felt to let go of all of that. And now I can go back and read it if I want to. I won't because I hate reading my own handwriting. But now, honestly, all I can remember is how good it felt to get all of those gross, non-productive emotions out of my head onto paper. Like, I'm not even saying that you need to keep the journal after you finish. You can burn the journal for all I care. I'm not a pyro, but if you need to feel any kind of catharsis, that is a way you can cathart. And it's true, like what I've seen on the internet, like if your head feels so full, you need to write. And number five, when your head feels empty after you wrote all that stuff, then you should read or learn. Number five, learn. Like I didn't know I was burnt out until I like saw articles online or like open TikTok and like everything I saw was about work burnout. And then I listened to a bunch of podcasts and audiobooks and I really built that vocabulary around what I was feeling. And they also had tips on how to deal with it. And it was really great knowing that I wasn't the first person to feel like this and they had really practical ways to overcome their versions of burnout and a lot of it really overlapped for me so that really helped and lastly i'll stop here because i'm rambling and i know that i've like talked too much about this lastly lastly i know that there aren't a lot of creatives who are christians in the industry that's just how it goes sometimes but what's really helped me above all of this was prayer and meditation. Grounding myself in truth has been essential throughout this process. Like, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have that. I'm constantly reminded that I'm more than what I do and what I do is not who I am. And the people I work with are just people and there will always be another work opportunity out there. There will always be a light at the end of the tunnel and burnout recovery is very possible. If you're struggling with burnout right now, you're in the middle of it, like I believe in you, take it from me. I didn't think I'd get out of <laughs> feeling so downtrodden. Like I was in the dumps for years and I'm just now overcoming that and I believe that like that's not just for me, that's for you too. So those are just a few things that I did that helped. Like I know I missed a lot and I'm doing what I can to manage the burnout that I still have right now. And it's not easy. And I know that some of these practices might not work for you and that's okay. I don't know, maybe they might. And like hopefully if you stumbled across my video and never even thought about burnout before, like, it was worth it then. Do you have any funny jokes to lighten the mood after this super heavy topic? I'll go first. Where does the king keep his armies? In his sleeves. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.